Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. Hello, this is Chris Parker, and I'm here with Paul Epping. And I and I believe I met Paul back in I think 2011 at Singularity when we were both there at the executive program. But Paul, it's delightful to uh, to see you again and talk to you again. Um, would you, for for me and for the others, maybe introduce yourself? And what I would love to hear is is you know what do you do? And, and why do you do what you do? Right. Okay, thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. And it, it, it really, it goes back to 2011 mm-hmm. when we were at the Singularity University. Mm-hmm. And I believe we were the third uh, group uh, that ever went to the Singularity University. Mm-hmm. And today it's a big booming thing, you know. Yeah. But we were in that, 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 that early stage, you know, very intimate. Mm-hmm. Um, we worked directly with Peter Diamandis and, 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 and the hot shots that we see today. Yeah. And yeah. that was really, uh, really interesting. And we did some, some um, uh, side tours. You know, we went to several companies. What I like most about it was the intimacy of mm. uh, where we were. There were not more than 40 people, all brilliant people from all kinds of uh, areas around the world and, um, and, and, and a kind of like-minded people. Yeah. And we had brilliant discussions. And I, I remember that as the day of yesterday. And I, a little story here, Chris, before we dump, jump yeah, into please. what I'm doing. Um, so shortly after I, I came back to the Netherlands, you know, my son had a, uh, had a, um, a party and, and he, he, he invited all kinds of friends, you know, and so, and I was full of what I, mm. Um, uh, heard mm-hmm. and what I have seen and discussed, you know, so I was talking about it. And then at the end of the evening, and I didn't know, um, he, he, he told my wife, Debbie, she said, well, Debbie, you have to take care of my dad a little bit because he's cuckoo. And, <laughs> and I didn't know. So yeah. years after that, yeah. um, I, I, um, I went uh, to, to Russia for a uh, mm-hmm. project and I lived and I worked in Russia actually for a year. Mm-hmm. And so, and, but Debbie was in the Netherlands and so she got bored and whatever. And she visited my son regularly because he, he lived, he, uh, he lived that time in a really nice place in Norway, mm-hmm. close to the ocean and, mm-hmm. and he, and she likes it. And having a glass of wine together in, in one evening, uh, she said, well, I know since then said, well, I have to recall that, uh, Debbie, because that time when I mm. told you that, because what my cuckoo dad said, all that, uh, all those things is what we see today. And, um, yep. so he's not that cuckoo, but what he said after that was mm. even more important. And he said, well, so imagine what that will be in the next five to 10 years. Mm-hmm. So in his business now, he's a, um, he's a marketing manager of a, um, a U.S. company. And he, he is using all those insights that I shared with him to, to put it in his company as well. So that that company is also changing and, and, and moving ahead of the curve, you know, and that is what they are still doing. Mm. So they are still world leader in the work that they are doing. And, um, and it's very much, uh, uh, based on, let's say the, the, the thinking of exponential technologies infusing yeah. that in their company. So that is an interesting story, but it, yeah. it like, like you, it, it's changed literally my way of thinking. And, um, well, well, and a lot of people around me, including, uh, and the big company that I was working, the CEO literally said to me, Paul, don't talk about the future. It's not going to happen. Stop with that nonsense. Literally. Yeah. And so like, I stopped talking in the com- inside yeah. the company, but outside the company even more. Even more. I, I had a, a bit of a similar experience because um, at that time, 2011, I was the CIO, group CIO for, for Lease Plan. You know, it's a, yeah. a mobility yeah. company over 30-odd the leasing company. And I sat in one of the, I think you probably did as well, sat in one of the uh, first versions of the, um, the, I guess the Google car, is what you call it back in the the day. Yeah. 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 We saw that thing with the LIDAR on top, you know, Yeah, so I was sitting in there there 
a lot of have computer it. spinning in the in the in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I came back and I, and and I and I I tried to you know raise alarm bells and say, hey, when driverless cars are here, and I have sit in in one, um, our entire industry is gone. Well, you know what does that mean? And uh, I basically got the same reaction you got um, yeah. because it's it's not this quarter. It's not even maybe this year at that time. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be really fascinating to see it, it completely changed my, um, my, my perspective on it. And then <clears throat> very interestingly with another guy, Timon Meckel, who was, um, has been a CIO of Athlon, one of the competitors, mm-hmm. him and I sat together and, and actually had the same sort of vision on it. And so we started yeah. doing speaking <laughs> him and I trying to wake up the industry, but it's, um, yeah, well, I guess the, industry, you know, they'll wake up when they wake up. So, so right. Right. Let's come back. Yeah. Let's come back to you. What? What? what th- tell us what you're doing, and and uh, and maybe yeah. why. Yeah. So, um, because of all the things that I that I s- see around me changing quickly, and um, over the I would say the last ten years probably, I I I did so many keynotes all over the world. You know, talking about exponential technologies and the dynamics of the exponential technologies, the impact that it will have. And I usually focus on a couple of areas that I'm really interested in, which is biotech, uh, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology. So that 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 really that that nanoscale is what fascinates me and what we can do there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I I was talking about that and I had discussions with the audience and and I was all the time I was so stunned by the fact that people had no clue what was going on around them. Even if they are people who are attending those keynotes, are, are usually people working in, 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 in tech spaces, you know, mm-hmm. all kind of things. But but very narrow focus, you know, and that's why they, they, that was my observation and experience, not really looking around them, what is happening and how can we use that. Mm-hmm. So then I, I in, in my work that I did that time, I have been CIO in several big hospitals in the Netherlands, and I also brought it in, um, in, in our technical environment. And in, in, in one or two hospitals, it was more successful than another one because the, the adoption was, was not how I envisioned that. And my, my, um, uh, it, was, it were always interim jobs that I did because mm-hmm. I, I run my own, own company. So I was that as an interim for usually half a year to a year. But nevertheless, so, and then... Um, later, when I worked for another big company and went to Russia, <clears throat> I started to build also um, uh, designing, helping to design new hospitals and try to also infuse that new thinking in those hospitals. And people mm. got really enthusiastic about it. Yes, we, that is where we have to go, blah, 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 blah. But once it really comes down to designing, it all goes back to what it was because mm. people... Were, and that was an, another confirmation, not able to oversee what is going to happen, you know, because it's not linear anymore. Yeah. And I could explain that linear versus exponential and where it's going. And I even said in Russia, the people who sponsored our work were in, in mining, were in oil business and whatever, you know. And, and I was talking already that time, said, well, coal mines, just forget it. Mm. It's over. End of the story. And today is what we see. Mm. And and I and, and I gave them ideas what they could do instead, but they never followed up on that. So well, long maybe, story maybe short, they are now. You know, maybe you know, I, yeah. I, I lost contact with yeah. them. Yeah. So um, I worked for a big company and stopped with that uh, work because uh, uh, I, I'm not a guy who can work in a big company. Um, uh, I don't need all kind of layers above mm-hmm. me who are telling me what to do and uh, and and I'm rather asking for um, for forgiveness uh, but never for perm- permission so mm-hmm. that's 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 how I work so I left the oh, company yeah. beginning of last year and uh, started uh, together with a good friend of mine a company 
exponential EQ, focusing on things related to exponential technologies because um, the awareness, focusing firstly on awareness, creating awareness, because mm -hmm. if you don't know what's going on, you don't know what you are, uh, what you can do with your own company. So that is basically what we are focusing on. And we do that in all kinds of flavors. And to mention you, one interesting thing, or actually two that we really do and, and, and that we really appreciate, is we have a board as a service. That means mm. that Tarek and I are virtually on a board and helping the board to look into the future based on their own strategy now. And um, there are now several companies who are hiring now futurists. Mm -hmm. and, and I think companies should do that because people who are, if you are saying, well, I'm a futurist, and they say, well, futurist, they are looking in a glass ball and where is it based on? But, you know, today it is more a science. It's not mm. anymore the glass ball. It is a science. I'm working closely with Jerome Glenn. He is the, C the, the CEO of the Millennium Project, and he is actually, I think, one of the top futurists in the world. And all the, world, the, the work that he is doing is based on science. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and he is developing scenarios uh, for all kinds of things. As we speak, he is working on a scenario, or three scenarios, actually, for artificial general intelligence. And I'm in the sideline and helping him. Mm -hmm. And that is fascinating. And so when we are on those boards, Chris, you cannot believe how narrow-minded uh, people are. And you have to be very political and nice and whatever oh. and, and try to, to bring them into that new kind of a mindset. That's what we are doing. And in addition to that, Chris, and then answering you, you, your question, is that we also have a youth board as a service. Oh, so wow. now we're bringing in young people, mm -hmm. younger than 25 years old, mm -hmm. the digital natives. Yeah. And the youngest board member that we have in our own company is nine years old. Wow. And, and he is telling us where things are going. Yeah. And, uh, and how that happens, you know. And, yeah. and, and I'm mentoring a couple of other people who we are now recruiting also to be part of the youth board. And those young people, 14, 15, 16 years old, uh, they are on a different planet. And, mm. and they are helping us to open our eyes even you and I, we are really uh, uh, skilled and, and educated in exponential technologies, but they live it. Yeah. And that's a different, a different nature. No, great. I just took a, took a note because, um, you know, my motivation for doing these interviews and podcasts with, is, is for me to learn, you know, and it's very selfish, actually. Um, no. and, 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 ho <laughs> and hopefully to learn from each other and, and maybe other people find uh, yeah. at least yeah. entertainment or inspiration from it. But um I would we call that curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm endlessly curious. Um, I would love to interview one of those uh, youth board members if that's ever possible. Oh, yeah. But yeah. how, how um, if there's people uh, listening to this that have a board um, that could benefit from your board as a service, is, is it, what website or where can they go to, uh, to find that? So they can go to eqexponential.com. Okay. And there they can see the uh, the offerings that we okay. are doing. I'll put that in the and, notes as well. And they can also go to Exponential. So it's Exponential, mm -hmm. ExponentialTalks.com. Yeah. And there you can go to the webinars that we did. And one of the webinars that we did is with young people who are students of the R Academy, which is a, a, yeah. a, a open platform. Uh, in addition to the high school that, that were, where, where those children are going. Mm -hmm. And they did a 10-week a, a project where they have to figure out um, solutions for one of the SDGs uh, uh, problems, you know. The SDGs, and those, the uh, Sustainability the Development Goals. Goals of the yeah. UN, yes, yeah. correct. And um, so they developed that and they presented that in the R Academy. And there were five teams chosen as the best projects. And we invited those teams in our webinar as well. And that is, 
that is that is all taped, you know, that is mm. all on record. And there you see those 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 mm. I would say those bright people talking about complicated stuff that they are not afraid of, but they are just working and making it possible uh, with minimal viable products that are, that are really working. And the first group there, Adam is in that group, and he is in our board. Mm. And Raya is another. She is the CEO of the Academy. She's 25 years old. Mm. She is mm. neuroscientist and whatever, mm. you know, a lot of things. Mm. And she's also in our board. Yeah. And so that people get an understanding about what kind of people are we talking? And they are helping us. There's another th story, uh, uh, Chris. Please. So we did, we did that sprint in, um, here in Dubai, a, a, a premium sprint. And in and, the end... Just, just so people know, um, a sprint, it's an exponential sprint, so it's a 10-week... Exponential week. sprint, 10-week sprint. Yeah. We go through a whole method, and in the end, the end result is that each team has to present two initiatives. We usually have two core teams and two edge teams. Mm -hmm. And in the final presentation, we invited the youth board. So we had three youth, the three young people, sitting next to the board where the teams were presenting to. And all the time, all the time, when someone did the presentation, the CEO of the board went to the to the young uh, the, the table with the young. I need to know that. I need to know that. <laughs> what do you advise? So they yeah. fed him yeah. with questions to ask the the the. And later, yeah. I heard it from both sides. Is that um, based on the input of the youth board, they could make their decisions, their final decisions. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? No, I love it. I've, I have heard, um, you know, people have implemented like reverse mentoring and yeah. and topics like that. And, you know, oftentimes when they're, you know, collaboration transformation or digital transformation, but, but having it structured as a, as a, a youth advisory board, I think is just brilliant. Yeah. Cause I also, yeah. I think it also puts it, gives it sort of a mandate or an authority, um, you know, instead of, you know, some kid running around, you know, trying to give advice, you know, it's actually structured, so then, you know, the executives who are in their operational excellence, closed, mm -hmm. focused, mm -hmm. where they should be for a lot of the time, yeah. but then yeah. give them a method to actually open in a safe way and get yeah. this input. I think it's brilliant. So nice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. and we, we use the metaphor, the, what the board does usually, they are looking through the microscope. Whereas those other people are looking through the telescope. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the metaphor that we are using. And that, that really helps. And, and, and that resonates very much with the board because that is what they are doing. Especially if you are in a um, stock market uh, uh, company, uh, they are living quarter by quarter by quarter. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, is their, that is their life. And, and, and rarely that they are looking further down because it, they hardly can oversee that. Yeah. Um, anyway. So when, when, um, for those that are listening that might not be familiar with EXO, exponential and exponential sprints, core means within the existing organization, within the existing almost, say, say product definitions, within the existing business model. And edge mm -hmm. means something else, meaning it's probably yeah. more disruptive. It's a new product, new business model. Um, and that's just yeah. part of the, the, the language there. And, and uh, I really like that approach because... Um, those two things can be very different. Um, right. and, when, and when you're, when you're going through the sprint to think out of the core, out of the box, it almost gives you freedom to, to explore more wildly. And then if you are working in the core, well, then there, there are natural constraints and boundaries that need to be, you know, adhered to and respected. So just, um, yeah, and you cannot, you cannot really disrupt that uh, because yeah. that is where you make the money. What you yeah. can do is to improve a lot of things using the attributes that we are using in the exponential uh, transformation world uh, yeah. that, that is using more the abundant world outside of, out, outside of your company. Yeah. How can you use that yeah. to improve your, yeah. your internal processes, for instance? So looping back to exponential EQ, so your, your organization, your company, um, and, and this question is about focus. Um, I suffer from shiny object syndrome. You know, there's so so many things to do in, in around exponential technologies, exponential attributes, um, you know, what's going on with new business models. Um, how do you maintain 
focus on maybe the right clients or the right topics over time. Yeah. So our focus is um, is, is always we are um, let's say um, uh, industry agnostic. So uh, that mm -hmm. means that that what we are doing applies to to all kind of industries because all industries will be our organizations will be impacted by exponential technologies. So our focus is always to 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 start to talk about. Um, uh, about the dynamics and what we are doing then, applying that to a certain industry. As we speak, we are starting with the financial world, several big um, uh, projects that, are, um, that we are going to start, and we are talking about how does exponential technology impact your financial business. Mm. And we are not talking about banking, we are talking about finance 5.0. Mm. So we are putting it really far away. And, um, and one of the, 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 the people we were talking uh, to last week in our webinar is um, the CTO of Alibaba, Zeng, uh, Dr. Zeng. And uh, so we had him in, in a webinar and talking about what is going on in the financial world. And what we really asked him is how can, for instance, the bank in Africa where we are going to work with, how can they defend themselves? And he said, defending is not the right thing. What mm -hmm. you have to do is to attack. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is a different mindset. Uh, so, and that is what we, yeah. that is our focus, you know. So but, what but can you do tra with tra you? Yeah. Traditional banks are not in attack mode typically. So no. it's, it's, a, no. it's a completely different culture and mindset. So you have to get them out um, and, 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 and what you are trying to do is to, um, to help them to understand their own processes and why they are doing that, the way they are doing that. Um, so uh, um, the focus of us is all the time trying to, under to give them the understanding of the dynamics to help them to change that mindset. And it is not easy. It is not easy, Chris, to do that. No. Uh, when, when I came back is, from the Singularity it? University way back then, it took literally a while before I really got it, before yeah. I felt it, before I lived it. My question will be, is it possible to change the mindset? And let me, let me um, couch that in, in a, a perspective, because as you know, my passion with this is how will these exponential capabilities impact the actual customer experience, the customer journey, the customer life. Um, and when I've done lots of work in you know, customer experience strategy and design, usually with some sort of technology underpinning, um, I have never seen an organization be able to shift its perspective on customers um, from selling to from scarcity thinking from you know to, to exploit the customers shift to a collaborative co-creative value enriching customer-centric mindset i've never seen that shift happen without a fundamental leadership change basically new leadership yeah i'm curious in your experience and i and i hope you can <laughs> please prove me wrong please prove me wrong is it possible for an existing leadership team to truly fundamentally change, or is it? Is it? Yeah, you're looking for incremental change. How? How? How could you? Yeah, do I can give you an example. Um, we were working. Uh, we did this EXO uh, premium sprint with a construction company, mm -hmm. and at the end of the um, of our uh, uh, sprint, um, I kept in contact with them. Uh, several uh, uh, meetings, whatever follow up things. And literally, what the CEO literally said to me, Paul, what you did was amazing work. You helped us to shift the mindset because what people are doing in my company are talking a different language now. Mm. And during the corona crisis, Chris, they are running eight sprints at the same time mm. because what they want to do 
is what can we do with the existing stuff that is going on in construction to do different things with? And they are really, as we speak, doing amazing things. They wow. already were implementing a couple of initiatives um, uh, out of the, as a result of the sprint. But there are two things. The, the CEO said to me, Paul, you helped us to do that, to bring that mindset uh, going on, blah, blah, blah. You helped us to, to, to deliver that baby, and now we have to nurture it. But he said it was a rough time for the teams. They work 80 hours a week and more, and that cannot stand in the shadow of the complexity of finding an MTP. And how cool is that? Mm -hmm. that um, because he said, well, how can we find something that everybody understands, not mm -hmm. only in my company, but also outside? Mm -hmm. And he, he, really, he literally drew me to a, uh, or dragged me to a, uh, to a big, huge whiteboard in the coffee corner with all kind of small sentences, you know, representing potential MTPs. And, he, and that is to work, you know. And mm. while we were there and he was talking about it, we were working on an MTP. And people came by, cup of coffee, talking, yeah. discussing. Nice. Yeah. Well, just for, the other for, thing, that is, go, that is go, my go. last thing, yeah. is what he said, well, we are now implementing uh, initiatives. And once that is done, we are leaving because we cannot lead the company anymore. Mm. Well, oh, That's a so mindset. You're proving that my point. That is a mindset shift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you have, you have, you have, okay. But the, the, for that person to have that insight and awareness and yeah. to, and to, and most undoubtedly then work on the succession planning in order for it to work, that, that I think is true leadership and true mastery. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that is what they did. And, and we yeah. have to get out of the way of the younger, the younger generation. What we do yeah. actually, we will help them in the back to, to do the more the political things, you know, if needed, but, but we have to get out of the way. Yeah. We, we don't understand it anymore. It's um, it's profound what you're sharing. Thank you so much. And we have about two minutes left. We've already spoken about a little bit how people can get in touch with you. So I yeah. think in the, in the last two minutes, um, if you would be so kind, you've used the term MTP a lot and, and maybe massive transform, transformative purpose. Um, for maybe many of the people, in, in <clears throat> 90 seconds or so, are you able to define what MTP is and why that's so important? Yeah. Yeah. The MTP is your, I would say your tailwind. The, the MTP mm. is what gives you energy, what gets you up in the morning. And I want to do that. I want to get it done. I want yeah. to get it, you know, and it, it, you live it all the time and not only you, but the people who are working for you all the time. And it should be something that connects to your heart. Um, our MTP of our company is transform humanity to make a difference that's mm -hmm. what we do that is the core of our work and all the things that we are doing revolves around that mm -hmm. so if we come up with new offerings it always is connecting to that because we want to transform humanity and that starts also with individual people you and me um, uh, individual talks that we have with, pe with people is as important as if you are talking to a to a, a company and if people have their own purpose and have and found that own purpose um, then it is easier for them to develop a purpose for the company and what does that what does that mean your purpose finding your purpose is something that um, that if you experience that if you hear that if you are that 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 what you are reading or seeing whatever that that gives you the goosebumps or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, then at least in my, that is how it works in my life. Yeah. And if I see that, then I have something, wow, I need to understand that. Wow. And then I do some research to that. And then I, from one thing into the other thing, you know, mm -hmm. that is how I got into single ed university. When I heard Ray Kurzweil wow. talking in, 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 in Denmark, that gave me the goosebumps because I had a, I had a, a, a natural, uh, um, let's say connection with what he was saying is what I feel, but I so, didn't have yeah. the, the, the tool set. The emotional, um, the emotional connection. Was we, are, we are at 30 minutes. We are out of time. Learn more at billion.com slash podcast.